see God's trying to continue to show me in my life is actually what engages people and, and allows them to feel more connected to you and then in return feel more connected to, okay, what's God doing in my life? This is Sports Spectrum, bringing Jesus into the sports conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Annika Schmidt, welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you? I'm good. I'm really grateful you guys are having me on. I've been following you guys over um, on Instagram and just inspiring everything you guys are doing and everything you're posting. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. We're glad you're here. And that's how we connected. You mentioned on Instagram. I think it was a post that you shared on May 14th uh, about the injury that you're going through that sidelined you for uh, for interrupting your pro career uh, right now with the Houston Dash. Tell us what happened with the injury and uh, and then we'll get to the post on Instagram. And I think that's going to take us into some real deep reflections on, you know, your faith and your your love for the Lord. But tell us what happened with the injury. Yeah, um, it was I would say gruesome was probably the best way to describe it, but it was pretty scary. So uh, it's it's actually ironic. I have a picture about 20 minutes before I got injured with the biggest smile on my face. And um, that's just kind of how my personality is just filled with a lot of joy. And that comes from my faith, um, to be honest. But yeah. um, it was like the first 20 minutes of training. And um Sadly, we have this area in our field that's like dry grass and is a little divot in that area because uh, a men's team was playing on there um, the months previous. And we've been trying to get it fixed and whatnot. And I just was in the wrong place, wrong time. My foot got stuck when I was like cutting back. So mm. I was defending and the ball switched to the other side. And so I was cutting back to the other side. And I think my foot or my cleat got stuck kind of in the divot. And then I probably tried to plant out and then my leg just slid out. And honestly, I thought I broke my tibia because I was in so much pain. Like I couldn't, usually when you get injured, you have like a pain block where it hurts for a second and you're like scared and then it goes away. It was so traumatic, like not just for me, but for my teammates. And like, it was just like probably three minutes of me screaming. It felt like an eternity. But um, honestly, in that moment, like the one thing I was like, God, like just make the pain go away. And like, finally, after like what felt like an eternity to me, like I was able to relax and everything. But at that point, I still thought my leg was broken. Yeah. Um, and with ACLs, like they're just like it either hurts or like it, it doesn't really hurt. And um, like I was carried off in like a, a golf cart and everything like that. and my um trainers did an awesome job with that um and at that point they still thought that like because I wouldn't let them touch my leg mm. and so like everyone's thinking my leg's broken and that's what I'm thinking because it kind of went a numb a bit but uh we got off the field and um it was really heartbreaking but I remember two specific moments um that were just so impactful um, I had two players come up and ask to pray with me. And one of them was one of my best friends on the team, Emily Ogle, and then Michelle Alozzi. And they're just breaking down. Like I could even start crying right now, thinking about like them just being there for me. And they just took my hand and, and prayed with me. And mm. that was the most important thing in that moment. And I mean, girls were really upset how it happened. And I knew they were like on my team and, and whatnot. Um, like they were just so supportive of me, but like, they were just like, we were all crying. Like we didn't know what to do. And, and it also just, obviously it was traumatic for everyone. And I remember when I got to the hospital, I was like, is everyone okay? Like, I just felt so bad because it was so traumatic and everyone got through training and everything like that. But just, just knowing everyone had your back and everything like that, when you're going through so much pain, um, was like, sounds, it was a terrible experience, but like, yeah. reminded you like okay like you have influence um and how you present yourself every day is influencing the other people and um but yeah it was it was the scariest thing I'm still working on honestly praying through getting over that just like initial injury because I just replay it in my head over and over and again like when I have time to think so it's just more surrendering that to God and and knowing that like with all this like he really does have a greater plan in store and it was an ACL and a meniscus. 
tear yeah. uh, that yeah. place, not a broken leg, which I, I guess is good news. I don't want to say there's good news in this, but um, um, injury is an injury, right? You have never suffered any other injury, I think, compared like this, I would assume, right? No. So I've had, honestly, I was pretty lucky. Um, I had little injuries, um, like stress reactions and whatnot. I actually had an injury coming into my first year of dash in my hip nothing to this extent like I don't think I've not touched a soccer ball for more than like for honestly like I took a two-week break in the off season and now it's like okay you have nine months to get back so (laughs) this is like wild and so foreign to me um so then again it's like I mean for me it's more like the timing felt terrible because everything was going so great this season and last year was a really big just like I would say like it, it developed me a lot, developed my character a lot. And this year, like I just felt finally like myself on the field again and everything was going great and just like happened. And I'm like, why is this happening? But it's like, honestly, just like if I put things in perspective in like a year, I'm going to be like, okay, God allowed that to happen for a greater reason. And maybe that is to just be still. And I've never really done that. So Mm. um, we'll see. You have to touch base with me in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hopefully will check in and find out how you're doing. But it was interesting to me because, you know, we talked about how we connected through Instagram, right? And your post, yeah. there's a lot to unpack just with that Instagram post, because I think the first thing I noticed was that this was just a few days after the injury that you shared this mm-hmm. and your yeah. default mindset was to type this. So I want to read it. You said, I truly believe God will turn this painful and heartbreaking experience into a testimony that will glorify him and his kingdom. And you obviously wrote more after that. But to me, that's powerful words to have and a perspective to have right after something like this happens to you and you go through this traumatic experience. What do you think compelled you to share those words in the midst of Like I said, it's a pretty crappy experience to go through. Yeah, honestly, I think like, if I'm being completely transparent, the first initial thought I had was like, when I found out I tore my ACL, like, honestly, I was hoping I broke my leg because it's a little bit of the easier recovery. Mm -hmm. Um, When I got to the ER, I was like, why does my knee hurt? And so like, or urgent care. And it's just like, oh my gosh, like I maybe maybe did something to my knee. Um, But like, honestly, I was more angry because of how it happened. And I felt like I did everything and I'm very just like type A, I do everything right. Um, like off the field and on the field to like keep my body healthy and as fit as possible. So I was more angry. And I think like even just showing the maturity and my faith that I'd have for the last like year, um, when I was in Houston, um, and I credit that really to my chaplain, um, at he- with the Houston Dash, her name's Fee. And honestly, like I was angry at the situation. I wasn't angry at God. And like that allowed me to have like the peace that surpasses all understanding that like, I can't change the situation right. and I can't change what happened to me, but like, I can believe that God allowed this. Do I think God wanted this to happen to me? Absolutely not. But like, do I really think that he allowed it to ha- happen for his glory and for a greater purpose? A hundred percent. So I think just like, I also knew if I wasn't willing to have that peace that God has given me in my life in so many areas, like I'm not going to like grow in a healthy way from the surgery. And I think like at that point, I was like, I have two decisions. I can choose to trust or I can choose not to trust. And, um, my fiance's like probed that question at me several times in my life. And that was just running through my head. Like, can I choose to trust God? And 100% has he ever failed me? Absolutely not. So it's like, I can choose to trust. Of course, I still have my moments where I'm like, uh, but it's different because I'm not angry at God anymore. I'm just angry at the situation because this is what I love to do. And this is what I feel like God's called me to do. Um, disciple on the field. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my perspective. One more thing you wrote um, in your Instagram post, just a quote, I'll read it. It says, evil will try to get a foothold, but God is your cornerstone and is always victorious. Love those words. But the fact that you chose that makes me think that maybe you began to see 
evil creeping in and trying to work its way into your life after the injury. Did you, did you sense that initially? I know you just described all the emotions, but were you sensing, yeah. wait a minute, you're not going to get this, you know, devil, you're not going to, you're not going to take away this, but I see you trying to creep in. Did you feel that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, um, didn't have much time to think after I got injured. So I got injured May 11th and then I had surgery May 13th. Um, so when I got home for my M MRI on, um, May 11th, which was a Wednesday, um, and finally was like away from people kind of away from the situation. Um, it was a really like overwhelming moment for me where I felt like the devil was overwhelmingly with self doubt. Um, mm -hmm. that honestly, I probably had previously in my last year, um, at my career at dash and um god really grew me through that self-doubt last year and i just felt like i was almost on this god like god high this um this season and like with that god confidence that he matured me matured me into and prepared me for for this season and it was almost like the devil was like see like you're not good enough your body can't hold up um you're not enough like you're not good enough to be here and play with all these amazing women um and honestly, I think a lot of professional athletes go through that struggle. Um, and for me, it's about daily surrender um, and just surrendering it. And a phrase I like to say is letting go and letting God. Mm. Um, and at that point, um, I was just like, I have two choices. Um, I can let this go or I can let this just overwhelm me. And I think in that moment, um, I choose to try my best to surrender. And the craziest thing is like, people think that when you're strong in your faith, like everything becomes easier. Um, but it almost becomes a little more challenging because then the devil and, and evil all want to overwhelm you so they can take you down. Um, but that's the most powerful moment in your life because God can really be revealed. Um, through you. And for me, it was really all about um, this, these two simple words that my chaplain um, fee at Houston dash told me to think about was daily bread. Um, each day give and give your best to each day and know that God will give you everything you need for that day. Now, e easier said than done. Um, I'm still struggling every day to remind myself of that. But without faith, like I probably would have given up to be honest at this point. Mm. Um, so just that reminder of daily bread and knowing, um, God is giving you everything you need for that day. And, um, knowing that he allowed this to happen, he didn't want this to happen, but he allowed this to happen. So ultimately it can prepare you just for something greater, um, for something greater for his kingdom, because, um, as a believer, I have to remember my life is not really my life. Uh, my life is to serve. And I think that's a really a challenging position to be in when I'm in this career. That's all about me, 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 me. Um, and that's a different challenge that I faced, but just surrendering that doubt consistently and knowing, um, even in this time, you can just see that God can really use you, um, if you allow him to. So yeah, I definitely faced that um, kind of that evil in my life, but just choosing again and again every day to surrender um, as a piece of that daily bread has been my kind of mantra. Have you been able to find a blessing yet in this? Oh, yeah. So um, I'm about a month and a month and a few days out. And honestly, the blessing is, um, I think it's Psalms 4610. It's just be still and know that I am God. Yep. And that is the blessing right now. I don't know how God's going to use this for his kingdom and to glorify him. Like, do I hope in a year I'm starting in the end of his cell and, and making a difference in that way? Yeah, 100%. But like, just the way my teammates embraced me when everything happened and like they were broken for me. It just shows you, you can be playing every single minute or you can be an injured player for nine months. And if you're impacting people on and off the field um, from what's coming out of your mouth and what's coming out of your heart, like that's more important than a sport any day. Um, but like, it's so ironic because I actually have a text message 
that I set my set myself that um, like I was starting at the beginning of the preseason and then like there was a little I got COVID and things were frustrating and I wrote myself a text that said God can still something like God can still um, use this and make it something amazing and I literally read that message again um, so I sent myself that message the night before I got injured the night before I tore my ACL and it was like so revealing and also another thing my chaplain and I were praying for was okay like what in this season is God asking of me um is he asking me to go above and beyond in certain areas or like is he actually asking me to be still and we'd gone over that verse so many times and it's just it's not ironic it's really just God you know and so he's really asking me in this moment to just the blessing is being still reflecting on all the blessings I have around me. Like here I am at home. I would never be able to do that. Right. Um, so honestly, that's the blessing I'm looking at right now. And I love how you asked that question because then again, it's like God speaking indirectly through you to me. Like, remember, this is a blessing um, when everything seems like it's really not. But um, yeah. Annika Schmidt is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. She's with the Houston Dash playing professional soccer and recovering from her injury. You talk a lot about your faith. Where does that come from? Tell us your testimony. Tell us your story. Yeah, well, honestly, I grew up um, in a Lutheran family. And it's kind of funny. When I was younger, I would have rather had a soccer game every Sunday morning <laughs> than go to church. Sure. Um, but... And I would love to say it's my fiance, but I actually started going to church because I liked a guy. Um, it's called Traders Point Christian Church in um, Zionsville, Indiana. And then I brought my whole family over there and obviously don't like the guy marrying a different guy. But um, yeah, went there, went to TPCC ever since and um, started to learn what it was like to have a relationship with God versus a religion. Mm. Um, and what it really looks like to have the mindset of Christ and to most importantly, love people the way Jesus did and to serve. And that was so empowering. But then when I went, so my faith was so strong when I was in high school and then I went to college and I realized, okay, there's evil in the world. And I had some traumatic situations, um, happen to me. And then again, like I actually lost my faith because I'm like, how would God ever let something happen to someone who's so faithful. But then I met my fiance, um, Tanner at athletes in action. And, um, I don't want to say I started believing in God again because of him, but he really pushed me to believe again. I had that foundation, but then I stopped believing, but then I grew back into that foundation. And I realized like there were some broken things in that foundation where like, I still felt like I had to be perfect and everything when I was younger and almost everything that God allowed to happen in my life and then meeting Tanner um, really grew me and matured me into my faith in the next years of my life. And um, there's been several like pivots in my life where I was at UConn for two years and God really used those situations to humble me. Um, I didn't play my first year. I was redshirted. Um, and then my second year, I played a little in a position like I really wasn't that great at. I was, I played the six versus center back, mm -hmm. but I learned how to be an amazing teammate where when people would be like, you should be playing, like you're one of the best players and you're doing so well. And the, the question or the answer became instead of like, yeah, you're right. It became, you know what, like, I'm not the coach and I'm going to respect my coach. I'm going to do everything to support the person in my place because I know if I do that full heartedly, they're going to support me when my chance and when God allows for the, the door to be open for me. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward, I um, transferred to Butler. Um, it was really hard for me. I love the girls. I love the school, but I knew I needed a change. And um, it was the craziest situation. Um, unfortunately, one of the girls' moms passed away of cancer. She had to leave. I stepped into her position, never stepped off the field since. And that just, like, it's, it's just so God working in different ways. And, like, obviously, it's, it's really a sad situation how it happened. And it kind of gripped me hard. But I was like, God really does open doors in these situations. And it's, it's your, your choice to open the door. 
um, or to just keep it closed. So um, yeah, it's just these pivoting moments where I'm just like, God has really been revealed in my life. So then you finish up at Butler and you go play pro in Sweden. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce it again, but we'll just say you were in Sweden. Uh, and then you end up in Houston. I'm less interested in the professional soccer side of things. Obviously, we're sports and faith. I'm more interested in the growth of your faith during those times. You kind of alluded to it a little bit here and there, but it was January of 2021, right after COVID. Well, the first wave of COVID, I guess, hit and you sign with Houston and you have your opportunity late last year. Um, tell me about the growth of Annika Schmidt, the woman of God during all this time. Yeah, it was a challenge. Um, coming out of um, college, um, feeling really confident. I put my name in the draft and didn't get drafted. So another moment. Okay, God, what's next? Um, I actually went to preseason with Houston, did really well. And then um, COVID happened. So I had to shift again. And I'm like, okay, God, what is happening? Yeah. Like, I'm doing so well here. And I'm at like my prime. You get out of college, you feel great. You're fit and everything. And I'm just like, what is happening? And then it became this waiting season where one thing God revealed to me is I am so bad at being patient, so bad. And like, um, because I'm type A and I love to control things. And a lot of athletes are like that because we like to control our destiny. We like to control things. Um, but like, that's where we need to grow. And personally, I need to grow um, that control element and just giving God trust. Um, and there was, a, I think it was like, I forget how many months it was, several months where I was just sitting, training every day at home. Um, and then just finally out of the blue, I got a message from my agent. Um, and he was just like, this team possibly wants you. And then within like three days I had to leave. Hmm. It was like the craziest thing. And, um, it was like, wow, like all this time spent worrying and God always had this plan. And I was like, imagine if I just turned that worry into like, maybe it sounds cliche, but into worship how different would like my feeling be right now? Like I was almost relieved versus like, so like joyful that God's presenting this opportunity to me. So that was really an area I grew in my faith. And then I got to Sweden and, um, I actually think I overtrained before I got to Sweden. So I got a muscle injury hmm. and then end up going to a different team. Um, uh, because their season's really interesting where they, when they break for international break, they don't play at all. So I needed to get gameplay. So I went to a different team and that was another God moment. It's like, okay, God, like, how are you going to use me here? And it was a humbling moment because it was a, um, in the second division in Sweden. And it was just like, again, one of those moments where like, this is like where God wants you right now. Um, and you need to trust that. And there was these moments when I was over there in Sweden where I actually, our trainer was atheist and he asked me what kind of music I like to listen to when I'm working out. And I was like, honestly, I like to listen to EDM, but when I'm really focusing on something, I love listening to Christian music. And then she, he told me about how he's atheist. And hmm. I just remember saying like, honestly, like, I'm really sorry, like whatever experience led you to be like that. But I was like, um, I just kind of spoke to him about like my faith. And I was like, I just, um, talk to people about my faith as a relationship with God. I am a Christian. And that's my religion. But like, most importantly, I was like, I have a relationship with God. He like is my father. And the words he said, I realized like, this is why God placed me here. He was like, I just envy that you have that relationship because I wish I would have something like that. And he told me he had a bad experience with people trying to shove religion down his throat. And I was like, I just really pray that like, God will like work on your heart. Um, and reveal things to you at the right season in your life. And I was like, that was the moment why God wanted me there because I'm not going to change him, but hopefully maybe a seed. Um, I'll plant a seed that other people will plant more seeds. And then eventually like, like faith will root up in his life. Um, but that was just like, even just for that simple moment, um, it was super powerful. And then um, I was struggling a lot personally because when I finished my season, 
um, in Sweden. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm supposed to go back to the first division um, and finish with them for the rest of the year. And then I get a text from James, um, our he's not the head coach of Houston anymore, but I get a text from him and he's just like, we want you with the dash. And I was like, Oh, so you want me to try out with the dash? And then I didn't say that, but like, I honestly said like, no, I'm with, um, yet to Bori for another year. And then he said, no, we want you with the dash. And I was like, this is the craziest thing. Like I was there for a week and now he wants to sign me. And I was like, another God moment where like, you literally feel like you're at your worst. Like God just totally sweeps in and like, just picks you, picks you up and carries you to the next place he needs you to be. Um, and then that next season with dash was just maturing in my faith. And it wasn't about me playing every single minute, uh, because I got to get the, get on the field once. Mm. Um, and people who know sports, know center backs don't sub a lot. And we have some, we had some excellent center backs last year, um, that have earned their right to play their veterans and their, experienced and I loved learning from them but, but again another humbling experience where God was like I'm gonna see like how you like cope with soccer not being your full identity like you need to revert to having God as your identity and mm. again back to my chaplain it was the question of like are you okay um, with God using you this year in a way that you uh, wouldn't have planned and I, at the beginning of that conversation, I was like, no, I was like, no, I want to play every single minute. <laughs> and then at the end of the year, she asked me the same question. And I was like, 100% because of just the relationships you build and, and the, the lives you see like impacted, not, not because of me, because like, because who I am is like, that's who God's made me, but the way God spoke through me or acted through me to other people. And then here I am now and I'm injured and it's just amazing the support I've had for my teammate but my teammates and my staff um but I really attribute that to like God just building all those moments so I could have the support he knew I needed in this time you know what I hear when I hear you speak Monica Schmidt I hear a soccer player disguised as a missionary on assignment from the Lord is that accurate I would say that would, would be pretty accurate. I would say, honestly, my chaplain revealed that to me. And it's really special that you said that. And I appreciate that because I think a lot of times I lose my identity in my sport or like training every single day. And it's so powerful when you just think of yourself as someone on mission for God. And when you say you're on mission for God, that means like you write your plans in a pencil and you let him write the plans in permanent marker. Mm. And that's been so hard for me. So it's like growing to get to the place where you're, I, I would love to say that everything I do is, is a revelation of being on mission for God, but I'm not perfect. And that's exactly why I need God. But um, he's just more revealing um, more and more each day and everything I'm going through that like this, this isn't about you, but he, but knowing that it's not about me, he will still like raise me up in ways that I could never imagine. Um, and he has greater plans for me than I could ever hope or imagine. Um, so it's just about trusting him and that trust comes from allowing him to use you in the ways that he feels are best for me to mature in my character and grow in my faith. So we're trusting God to, to do the permanent marker thing and your plans yeah. are in pencil. I presume though, your plan is to rehab in pencil <laughs> when it comes to fruition, but to rehab yeah. here and to get back on the soccer field, right? Yeah, 100%. That is the full focus. Um, I've been told a lot of times it's not, a race it's a marathon um it's it's funny when people say that to me because they know I'm like crazy about like getting back and they know I'll take care of myself but they really want me to just like be still slow down and it's just that mm -hmm. revelation of like how God's speaking to me through other people like it's okay to just like not get five extra pounds on your leg press every day like I had that conversation the other day um, but 110%, I know God wants me back on the field. And now the next nine months are about trusting God to get me back on the field. Because like I said, I still struggle like nightly having that like terrible incident replayed in my head. And then, it, like I said, it's about surrendering in and letting go and letting God 
and then surrendering the doubt because there's still these moments where I'm just like, what it's going to be like in nine months. Like I never went more than two weeks without touching a soccer ball. <laughs> so it's really allowing God to just come in and be like, now I'm going to fight for you. And you're going to have to let me fight for you because you literally, I can't do anything to speed this up. Yep. And t- to be honest, I've already seen like a miracle, like just in this recovery because I went to the doctor's office and um, obviously the way it happened was so unfortunate. And I probably like wasn't supposed to tear my ACL and like the circumstances, like the external circumstances caused it. But he was like, you're like four weeks ahead of schedule. And I haven't been trying to go crazy, but just the way my body's healed, like, of course I'm still in pain, but I told people the other day, I was like, I kid you not. I prayed once and I like, I, I pray a lot, but like I was in so much pain and I just felt, it sounds crazy, but I just felt God like, like hand on my leg and like it's crazy but like the pain like didn't go away but like I would say 75% of the pain went away and I've just felt that in in God's presence when I allow him to step in everything everything I'm doing in the environment where I'm like okay God step into this environment with me um and he's been doing that in the rehab and it's like a miracle just the fact that I'm four weeks ahead of schedule um so that's just a miracle in itself um so, yeah, yeah, and you don't want to you don't want to miss the miracles that can take place as you're going in the midst of the rehab, right? Because the yeah. miracle will be you back on a soccer field next year, and we're watching yeah. Annika do her thing, and we talk about that. Look how far she's come. But it sounds like you're keenly aware of this. But I'm just encouraging you. God's going to do something pretty cool in the next nine months too. That's going to change yeah. someone else's life forever, not just yours. So I think yeah. just being aware of that right during this time. And saying, okay, God, I have to be still and be patient, but there's still something that you're going to do here, whatever that is, to glorify your name. Yeah, 100%. Um, You said it perfectly. I actually, with my chaplain, got to visit a school in high school, or a high school in Texas, um, in in Houston. It's called LaPorte High School. Mm. And it was so amazing. I got to just share a little, she's their chaplain too, but it was girls and guys. Um, And I got to share a little of my testimony and um, it was just amazing because at the beginning, everyone was really nervous kind of to meet me. And you could see they were kind of like sitting a little further away. I was standing and I was talking. And then at the end of the session, I was sitting in my chair because I'm not allowed to stand a lot. (laughs) And the coach was like, all right, everyone go see, like, Ani is my nickname. They're like, everyone go see Ani. And I kid you not, they all, like, it was like masses of kids running in, like, super close, wanted to sit right next to my feet. And it sounds so funny, but, like, I told my chaplain, and obviously take this in context, but I was like, it reminded me of, like, when all the kids ran in, um, that story when they ran in to sit at Jesus' feet, and, like, they were so attentive. And Mm -hmm. then you realize you have such an impact if you're willing to just like, honestly, humble yourself. And they kept asking me all these questions, like about soccer and everything. And obviously that's their attention drawn to. And then um, they're like, who's your favorite teammate? And I was like, honestly, I was like, I'm going to say my favorite teammate. That would be bad. Um, But I was like, I was like, Jesus. And they just loved that answer. And they just kept vibing off that answer. And it's just like, you can choose to have that impact, but um, just standing there, you have to have like this sense of humility because you're, you're crippled, you're broken. Mm -hmm. And that humility God's trying to continue to show me in my life is actually what engages people and, and allows them to feel more connected to you. And then in return, feel more connected to, okay, what's God doing in my life? Um, Jesus is a pretty good teammate, isn't he? Yeah. He's the best one there is. (laughs) Annika Schmidt, uh, thank you for sharing your story. Thanks for coming on. Uh, it's not done. Obviously, there's a lot more to share and we're going to have to get you back on and kind of hear all that God did. Next year, we'll get you back on when you come back on that field and we'll learn all that God did in the last nine months to a year in your rehab. But thanks for sharing a little bit here on Sports Spectrum. Thanks for connecting with us uh, on Instagram and uh, all the best to you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me and um, I'll keep following you all and keep sharing the word because you're impacting a lot of people's lives and I appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, 
check out our website, sportspectrum.com.